be finishing the worksheet with the constant of proportionality. We started this in class. So remember, as it shows here, uh, it says for every three days, the spider makes two webs. So of course, for zero days, zero webs would have been made. And then for three days, uh, the two webs would have been made. So the three and two. And then if you went three more days, you're keeping the same rate or ratio here, three to six, you're going three more days, you would go two more webs. So if you continued this chart and you went three more, which would be 12, you'd get two more here, which would be eight. And then you would also continue graphing these. So I have the first three, this is zero and zero, three and two, six and four. So these correspond to these numbers here. I'll do the next one, nine and six. So nine on the x-axis and six on the y-axis would be right here. Nine days, six webs. Next one is 12 and eight, 12 and eight. So 12 and eight. And you can also do the next one by looking at the graph, 15, 10, 15, 10. And you should be able to tell the last one just by looking here, three across and then two up, keeping that same rate as you go up. And this should make a straight line because they are proportional. If the line was not straight, it would not be proportional. And remember, for dependent, the number of webs depends on the number of days. More days would equal more webs. So for down here, you can write any question uh, related to this. You can say something like, how many webs in up here, it goes up to 18. You can say how many webs in 30 days. And then you can use the equation uh, to answer that. So if you did the constant of proportionality, you would just basically need to do the two divided by three. You get about like 0.67. So the proportionality is about 0.67 webs per day. So if we went back on the graph, and we wanted to see how much for one day, it would be one and a point, about 0.67. And if we went to two days, we double up the 0.67, that would be about 1.2. So as you see, they would keep following along uh, the same pattern, it should form a straight line still. And this last one here is 12. Oh, I put the wrong dot here on the graph. It should have been here. There we go for the 18 and 12. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, now for the pumpkin sales. So they give you all the data in the table, 00, 224, 448. So if you wrote out the equation, right, the amount here would be for the proportionality. It would be, and we can do this for... Uh, the cost of the pumpkins, right? So K equaling, it'd be 24 for two days. 24 for two days. So the proportionality would be 12 because 24 divided by two is 12. That would mean they would be $12 each because you get two for $24. And then you can graph it down here. So it would be zero, zero. Now 24 might be a little difficult to find, but you have 20 here, and you have 30 here. 25 would be halfway down the middle. So when you got to 24, you'd put a dot just below there, right about there. It'd be two and 24. 
So you kind of have to estimate a little bit on where these dots go. And then you have 4 and 48. So you go to 4, and here's 40, here's 50. So it will be just below the 50 right about there for 4 and 48. Then you'd keep going 6 and 72, 6. Here's 70, so if I went across, it would be just above the 70, right about there. And then 8 and 96, 8 and 96. 8 here, 90 is here, 100 is here. So it would be just over halfway, right about there. And then we have 10 and 120. 10 and 120 already has a spot, so we would go right across from there, down from the 10, right here to that spot. And then lastly, 12 and 144. So 12 is the very last one. 140 is here, 150 is here. So it would go just under the halfway, right about there. And this one's a little bit more difficult to see, but you can see that it pretty much makes a straight line. Might be off a little bit because you're estimating uh, with the where the dots are. And then for this one, remember the cost depends on how many pumpkins you buy. You buy more pumpkins, it's going to cost more. And for this one, you can say something like, um, what is the cost of 50 pumpkins and you'd be able to substitute that in there for the 50 pumpkins you know the rate is 12 so you would basically do 50 times 12 